Take another photograph and document a life that's right. And ways consist of simple things, the days of black and white. Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to Talking Gov Podcast with me your host Ruben Django Pouch. Um, hey how's everyone getting on? Welcome back episode 24, hope you're doing well. We're just going to play you a little something something right here for the crack, wait till you hear this. I actually called the showrunner during the pilot and said, I think Cheryl's a lesbian. She doesn't like men. And he was like, great, let's unpack that. Let's talk about it. And sure enough, we had her come out in season two. And I think that's the coolest thing I've gotten to do as an actor so far is have my art touch somebody's life like that. I've had a couple of fans come up and say that it's been a huge inspiration to them to come out, which has been incredible. Well, I think... Amazing. Isn't that amazing? Um, I suppose when I listen to that, I think... Oh, by the way, that's just some, like actress who i don't have a clue i never seen her before in my life but that's some actress there on the drew barrymore daytime talk show and she's being fabulous isn't she or or is she actually being a self-serving little wagon because i listen to things like that and i just think fugazi she's saying she's virtue signaling she's grandstanding to the highest order to say yeah cheryl's a lesbian how did she figure out cheryl was a lesbian Thank, and thank God for Cheryl, she found out she that the actress who plays Cheryl in the TV show figured it out because otherwise the the fictional character might have been miserable in her TV existence if she'd been living in the closet this whole time. But I just look at that and I think that's a sort of microcosm for everything that's wrong with the world. It's like, oh yeah, I just care about the LGBT community. It's just like, you don't give a fuck. That is the only thing you're trying to do there is improve your career. That's all you're trying to do is you're trying to jump on a social justice movement in order to further your career. It's really malevolent practice. Um, And I wish people would see shit like that and call it out for what it is, total another bullshit. And look at Drew Barrymore. I mean, who even knew she had a daytime talk show? What a load of bollocks. Who cares? So I looked at that and it reminded me, though the reason I'm bringing it up is because it actually reminded me somewhat of Simon M's comment from a few weeks ago or a month ago. It's like, oh, I'm this, I'm good. Are you that? Because that's bad. It's like, fuck off. These are full of shit. But I just looked at that and thought we'd have to share it on today's podcast. It's cray cray. Um... So basically, let's get straight into it. We're going to have a little chat about an article that was in the Irish Times. And I know I'm not a big fan of the Irish Times, but I found this article to be very interesting on a couple of levels. So let's just see. It's an article in the Irish Times about Aramark and their tenure of Avoca and how things have gone. So the reason I wanted to talk about this is because I worked for Avoca. I joined Avoca in summer of 2018, around July, I think, and I left in and around September of 2020. And so I suppose I never worked for the Prats. I always worked for Avoca under Aramark. And there are some interesting points in this article, and I'd like to touch on a few. Before I do, I'm pretty sure we all know that Aramark are these big international scumbags who run direct provision centers and provide, this is a beauty, on their own website, nutritional services for the correctional facilities in America. So basically, they're psychotic, sociopathic lunatics who make money off the exploitation and suffering of other people. Interesting, huh? So, um, rather than sort of, we will touch briefly on a few things, but I really wanted to center the idea of this podcast about uh staff loyalty and i mean i don't mean your staff being loyal to you i mean you being loyal to your staff now i work in the service industry and right now at the moment for a lot of people it's hell on earth in the front and house front in front of house and back of house and mainly because there's no staff and the people who own businesses not everyone who owns their businesses is looking after the staff they have 
That's happen happening on a local level and potentially a national level. So let's have a look at that and really remember, that's what I want to talk about. I'm talking about being loyal to your staff. The pandemic has really shown, it's really highlighted people who are loyal to their staff, look after their staff and people who don't. And I think right now, because a lot of the places, shall I say, that we're operating on an, uh, the basis that they don't really look after their staff, have have had for the last three four five however long they've been in business potentially a revolving door situation but now with the staff crisis we're having there's no chefs to keep pushing in to that revolving door and so if you don't look after the chefs you have uh, currently you'll lose them and by default you could lose your business so it's a really interesting subject at the moment and is anyone out there working in the service industry how are they finding it at the moment would they please comment in the comment section below i'd love to get an idea of how other people are faring so straight away what has gone wrong for evoca and aramark is the head is the headline of the article a u.s group insists it is committed to the niche food and retail business it acquired in 2015 so let's just leave through the first parts of this hmm and this is by uh, who gives a fuck aramark and avoca were always something of an odd match the u.s property retail and services group and the darling of ireland's food scene at its core aramark was a mass caterer and facilities manager Avoca was a niche food and retail business. Aramark ran direct provision centers, among other things, uh, nutritional services for uh, prison system in America. And Avoca won awards for its sourdough bread. So I suppose they're really hitting home there straight away that the, that the marriage seemed to be somewhat at odds with itself. It might have been a bit of a mismatch. Um, the article continues. So when the U.S. company acquired Avoca from the Pratt family for a reported $64 million in 2015, many wondered if the Avoca brand would suffer, not least because Aramark had a reputation for cost cutting. Both sides promised it wouldn't, but six years on and that pledge looks increasingly shaky. Right, okay. So, I mean, I think just from a quality standpoint, so like I said, we want to talk about staff loyalty, but they're just touching on a couple of things here. As a customer of Avoca, as someone who used to go and enjoy the perceived value for money for all demographics previous to Aramark's takeover, um, I did notice pretty quickly after 2015 that the standard of certain things within Avoca started to drop started to wane and i was very poor at the time and so i really uh, perceived value for money for me was extremely important and i would go up and spend money on what i thought were good value products and potentially on a frivolous day spend a bit on this thing over here and so in general i think it was a good way to be having that perceived value for working classes got the working classes through the door it was a treat for them but then they once you have people in the building it's easier for them to part it's easier to get them to part with even more of their money so i think look for me the grab and go the central processing the ready meals all of that stuff the quality of that stuff seemed to wane quite quickly um i mean the red like some of the wet dishes and lasagnas etc they were always of a really high standard in avoca and sometimes i would get the two for one special when they were going out and i'd bang them in the freezer and i knew they were a good product and i was happy to get two for one when they were maybe 9.95 for a pint but as i was saying uh, and but then unfortunately the standards of those wet dishes lasagnas at um, bakes etc also seem to wane okay so uh in from personal experience i would argue that the the quality of food uh the quality of food went down a bit and the perceived value for money went down a bit and in general the prices all went up a bit that's my opinion that's my conjecture at the moment so bam 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 let's keep cracking on will we most of avoca's original management team has left including the company's two executive chefs, Lady Hayes, who penned the popular Avoca cookbooks, and Schmishmishme, who's a friend of mine, so I won't say his name, and its executive manager, Teresa Byrne, the head of food buying, Elaine O'Connor, the head of retail buying, Mandy Hazlitt, and Avoca's innovation chef, Schmishmishme. So, 
On top of that, about 51 managers, assistant managers and other senior staff across the group's 14 stores have also been let go. Most received the minimum statutory redundancy payout of two weeks salary per year of service, some with more than 20 years of service. Many of those taken on since are said to be young. Many are understood to be on minimum wage contracts. So, just to tackle that, the aforementioned uh, executive chefs, executive manager, head of food buying, head of retail, and innovation chef. It says there that they left, but in the previous, in the next um, paragraph, it says were also let go. So the reality of it is that original management team who really built along hand in hand with the Prats, those aforementioned chefs and management employees built Avoca into what it is, built the brand, built the standards, built the culture into what it was when Aramark bought it. And within about three or four years, when the inner workings of the operation were figured out, Aramark let them go. Aramark showed those people the door. Um, and you might argue that, yeah, well, that's their right, and potentially it is, but we'll get into another part of that in a while. But what I will say is that the innovation shift, to my understanding, wasn't let go straight away with the rest of the management team. Oh, no. They waited until they had the 2020 Christmas catalogue in the bag, recipes, photo shoot, etc., all intellectual property. Once that was in the bag, they then took the chef who helped them get it in the bag or in fact got it in the bag entirely for them and fucking got rid of her so again straight off the mark we can see that there's a sort of lack of staff loyalty a lack of loyalty for the staff who made the company what it is okay 51 managers assistant managers etc i know plenty of managers assistant managers and floor supervisors who were let go during the covid situation and like just a little uh, nuance of because there are so many um instances to talk about that i'll just take one that i've never that really stuck with me at the time there was a gentleman and he was exactly that a total gent who worked as an assistant manager in the branch that i worked in which was a uh, monkstown and then obviously there was an, a retail arm in that building as well and the assistant manager of the retail part of that building was let go he was shown the door and i felt at the time that that was especially shitty for him because he was too far away from retirement to be thinking about retiring but he was also a bit too old to be jumping into a new retail situation and trying to fight it out you know in a new retail environment very difficult for that man and he would no doubt have a mortgage and other financial obligations that aren't going to stop um and I remember at the time people be like a friend of mine, a chef who also worked within the company was saying, this is when people start banging on about mental health and that pisses me off. And I was like, whoa, why, what's wrong with t- people talking about mental health? And he said, he made a really good point. He said, that's a situation we've been talking about for years. But one thing we never want to have a discussion about is the catalysts for people's poor mental health. And so in this situation, let's not discuss that man's mental health. Here, Peter, mind yourself, mind your mental health. No, why don't we take that discussion or that, why don't we actually have a discussion about or criticize the people who created the situation that will put that man in poor mental health? Why don't we have a discussion about the fact that Aramark via Avoca have called this man's profession? You know? Oh, but about. It says, many of those taken on since are said to be young. Many are understood to be on minimum wage contracts. So then the article goes on to COVID impact and says, when contacted, the company said the current headcount was just under 1,000. This is a quote from Aramark. Now, Avoca, like many businesses in the retail sector, was significantly impacted as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic, it said. In order to safeguard the future of the Avoca business and create efficiencies across many departments, a process of restructuring affected less than 6% of the workforce across head office and store management level, it said. The company also rejected the claim that most of the new hires were young and on minimum wage. Quote, unquote, to claim that the majority of staff taken on are young and on minimum wage is categorically untrue. 
So I spoke to a couple of friends of mine working in two separate branches, and they told me that 100% the people who were let go uh, in the last 12 to 18 months have been replaced by really young minimum wage employees who are meant to be on part-time contracts but are doing 40 plus hours a week and it's a very stressful situation because they don't have the expertise the experience and the wherewithal to run those positions correctly and that's no fault of their own that's a fault of the upper echelons of management who have gotten rid of the people who knew how to do the job and replaced them with inexperienced young staff so that is according to friends of mine still working within Avoca at a couple of separate branches that doesn't make it 100 percent true but it's um, a separate opinion then it says goes on to say in the article that several staff members told the irish times however that they had little contact from management while furloughed and were effectively left in the dark about their employment status they also claimed they were offered less favorable jobs elsewhere within the aramark group under the company's restructuring plan which prompted them to leave so avoca will go on to say or, or should i say aramark will go on to say that at avoca we have always prided ourselves in our strong internal communications with our colleagues, the company said. In fact, since the start of the pandemic, we have utilized a wide variety of channels and formats to ensure our employees were kept up to date on the operations, the company said. Now, I would have to straight away from experience, not through something I heard from a friend of mine that still works there or anything like that. From personal experience, I would have to refute that claim from our remark. So I would say that there was no internal communication with colleagues and that they did not utilize a wide variety of channels and formats to ensure our employee to ensure our employees were kept up to date on operations. That is erroneous. That in fact is a lie. Because I worked in the restaurants in the wake of the first lockdown, okay? So in April of 2020 or whatever it was, we were locked down and we were sent on our merry way. And that was the way it remained until literally a few months ago. Avoca and Aramark decided to not open any of their service restaurants their table service restaurants for nearly two years i think then am i right in saying that just coming up two years yeah literally about 18 months and they refused refused point blank and i would say that the people in hr you know who you are and you should be ashamed of yourself really to do the bidding of an international multi-billion dollar corporation and throw normal working class colleagues of yours under the bus but you point blank refuse to engage in any conversation or put forth any plan for people getting back to work anyone who worked within the table service restaurants and that's front of house or back of house was left completely in the dark in spite in spite of the fact that this was our livelihoods this is how we paid our bills this is how we paid our rent this is how we looked after our families avoca or aramark more to the point couldn't have given a fuck they couldn't have cared less about people. And I was really disgusted and upset at the time with the situation because everyone there worked their bollocks off for the company and it felt like a real smack in the face. And I know from talking to other chefs, because that's what we do, we still communicate. I work now with two chefs from Avoca who worked in different branches uh, I know oh, friends of mine are were working in Kilmac everywhere across the board chefs and front of house staff were f felt like they had been totally abandoned felt like they'd been totally left in the dark that for me shows absolutely zero staff loyalty at the time I just thought you don't give a fuck about us you don't give a fuck about your staff you have no loyalty to your staff if you did you would make an effort to communicate with them and make sure that they were all right and you didn't do that and i was the head chef so i would communicate near on a near daily basis with chefs of mine and listen to their problems listen to their fears and anxieties and go and try to communicate that with head office try and talk to such and such and such and such in hr and i was literally in a sort of diplomatic and politically correct way told to fuck off we don't want to know about it ruben leave us alone so again here's another 
case here is more evidence of absolute zero staff loyalty from Aramark to their staff one issue or one thing I'd like to say uh, while I'm talking about this is that all of those people who were let go those managers stores uh, shop assistants etc etc all of the chefs who had to just literally leave and go find new homes for themselves new jobs for themselves all of that happened while Aramark was being subsidized by the government. So whilst they're taking money from the government that we will pay for in tax, they're throwing normal everyday people under the bus. People are losing their jobs whilst the company that is taking those jobs from them is being paid by the government. And we will then pay that money back to the government. Isn't that insane? Isn't it sort of gross and surreal? And doesn't it make our own government complicit in this situation in this total clusterfuck crazy don't forget that now when it's time to vote and Fine Gael and Fine Foyle want to spend their political capital and tell you that they've saved everyone from the pandemic remember that when you're at the voting booth next time that it's a fucking fugazi and that they've in fact paid people to uh, execute your misery so uh, blah, blah, blah. There's a few bits we're going to jump ahead of, but then it goes. They also claim that Avoca's fresh fruit and vegetable produce, which used to be sourced directly from growers where possible, is now being acquired from other sources to cut costs. A recent posting on Greystone's open forum on Facebook about quality in Avoca's Kilmacan Oak store elicited 149 comments, the majority of them negative. Now, I'll play devil's advocate for you here. I'm not into the court of public opinion. I certainly wouldn't be that into the Greystones Open Forum uh, on Facebook or the Greystones Open Forum page on Facebook. So I'm not using that as evidence, but I'm going to provide my own little bit of evidence for that to support that claim right there. When I first started working, when I first started working in Avoca, we used to order our fruit and veg internally. There was a fruit and veg distribution center or whatever you want to call it within Avoca. That was presided over by a man who would go to the fruit and veg markets in Holland and Spain and places like this and secure the best veg possible, the most high quality, the, uh, the highest quality vegetables and fruit possible so that they could bring it back and distribute it accordingly as required throughout the Avoca um, businesses and that included fruit and veg that we used in the restaurants that include the fruit and veg that you buy off the shelves it was of the highest quality I have to say I hadn't worked with veg that was so good before it was great it's great crack and quite soon after I started working there they were just like Oh, that's done. We're do that's done. The guy who used to do that, that were whose job that was to go over to the market store, he's gone. He doesn't have a job anymore. You know all these lads that deliver the fruit and veg, the van drivers that you know meet and talk with every day, they're gone. They lose their jobs next week. We don't give a fuck. Get out. You can go on the dole, you're unemployed. Next week, as of next week, that arm of the business is gone and you are all redundant. Good luck. So that for me doesn't look like staff loyalty that looks like as soon as you figure out a way to do things even marginally cheaper you're going to throw your staff under the bus uh, regardless of how it might affect the quality of your product they don't give a fuck quality of the product more money so that happened that's not conjecture or hearsay they fired people made people redundant uh, at a whim basically and lowered the standard of the produce at a whim and no problems no questions asked in fact i was at a meeting with this fucking plank in a 300 euro rover and shirt standing there like he just you know whatever and he was going on about how the newest yeah we've after okay uh sourcing a fucking and amazing the top the best the biggest and the best fruit and veg supplier in the world so that they're called blah 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 here in ireland and they're actually a subsidiary of this bigger company in europe who in fact are the european arm of fifes and he says this like the fucking cat that just got the cream like he's presenting some you know a wonderful thing i was just like fifes that's dodgy no we're talking about a company that stages a coup d'etat in Central American countries and literally murders 
uh, their workforce who want to protest against l- low wage income near slave labor. Don't be banging on about that. We'll fucking kill you. That's fives. And he was just like, sorry. He looked at me like I was something on the bottom of his shoe. He did. He it was disdainful. Like you know, we don't give a fuck. Who gives a shit? Who gives a fuck if fifes are human rights violators who kill workers who just want fucking equal pay? Don't be ridiculous, mate. We've got bigger and better things. You know, we've got bigger fish to fry here. You know, we're trying to turn over twelve point eight billion a year. We don't want to hear your socialist nonsense. Okay, so that happens. Standards dropped. People got fired. Um, and again they want to refute those claims and say in fact the Volker and Aramark remain committed to innovation buying Irish and buying local they do in their fuck a Volker prides itself on using the freshest ingredients and the finest quality produce I mean that's just as like insert blurb here put it out who gives a fuck this is where I thought it was a bit interesting because I have a theory, and I could in fact be wrong, but I have a theory because I know for a fact that if you manage to get rid of all of these big contracts you have, um, like these big wage contracts you have, if you can get rid of them and replace them with 10 year own error contracts, um, if you can stop spending so much money on this top quality pr- produce and, and cook corners and do this and just buy shitter produce and... And then if you can take the real estate that your that your restaurants and because probably quick one to say under the whole umbrella of what Avoca does because it's got there's many facets to their business there's many ways in which they generate revenue this table service restaurants potentially could have been one of the lower performing facets of the business okay uh, based entirely upon the fact that they put a lot of money into the service, they they put a lot of money into the produce, and they put a lot of money into gear, and it was always the best of gear and chefs and stuff to work with. So the table service restaurants might have would have been might have been one of the lowest performing departments of the Avoca brand, as it were. But they made Avoca, they improved the Avoca brand on a whole. The Avoca brand was a sum of all its parts. You can go to the table service restaurant, you can go and do the self-service thing, grab and go, uh, the the wools, the tweeds, you know, there was a lot to it. And the point I'm trying to make, I suppose, is that I think they sacrificed those low performing restaurants or those slightly lower performing restaurants um, and called the staff who worked there in order to use that real estate for stuff that generated insane ma- amounts of money, that generated insane profit margins, i.e. the shops. They are fucking cash cows. And so my theory is that I would think that Avoca probably haven't been impacted by COVID that much at all, that potentially they're making even more money because they've just adapted what they do and they've sort of gotten rid of low performing shit and they've got rid of those high wage contracts and then funnily enough in the latest set of accounts aramark holdings ireland reported a pre-tax loss of 60 million euro for the 12 months to the end of october last year while noting it had reduced staff numbers by 653 however it doesn't break out numbers for Avoca. So they're only going to show us the Aramark Holdings numbers. We don't know whether or not Avoca is performing better or whether, in fact, it has been impacted greatly by the coronavirus situation. I have a theory that it hasn't. I have a theory they're making more money now than ever. I could be wrong. But I do know this. Aramark, a New York stock exchange listed multinational with an annual turnover for 2019 of 16 billion dollars or 14 billion euro that's insane they're like so obviously they're not they're, they can't be poor mounting i wouldn't have thought they're up in the billions they're a multi-billion dollar international corporation so in a statement accompanying accompanying said accounts aramark's directors said the business has maintained a strong focus on cash generation and this was achieved through contract renegotiations to reflect the difficult trading environment, continued discipline in terms of costs and by availing of various government support schemes. So like, let's just go through that. Strong focus on cash generation. So they made loads of cash. It was achieved through contract renegotiations to reflect difficult trading environment. They said to everyone, you can fuck off because we can't forge it and we're going to employ these kids to do your job. Okay, and then 
continue disciplines in term continue discipline in terms of costs so we're just not going to spend any money we're going to buy it as cheap as we can and by availing of various government support schemes it's just like we threw everyone under the bus we started to put the lowest possible standard of produce into the food and we got money off everyone or we got money off the government while we did it and guess what we're generating loads of cash what the fuck so we've been talking about we're saying this is about staff loyalty and i think um i had said before that if you're not looking after your staff you're going to lose them and right now by default if you don't look after your staff your staff leave you leave it's your business apparently if you worked for the prats they really really looked after the staff and it could have been detrimental in some ways because maybe there was so much in-house promotion that not the right people were being promoted to the right positions potentially i do think even under the prats that there was mismanagement within avoca and if that had been dealt with efficiently the that things would have been a bit better and they probably maybe wouldn't have have to have done an old smash and grab and cut the throat right out of avoca um so in its last full year under the Pratt family, Avoca reported sales of 59 million euro while generating a net profit of 2.2 million. That's a relatively low level of profit for the size of turnover, less than 4%. One industry observer said the Pratt family sacrificed profit to ensure top line sales and the company's premium brand. In contrast, he said, Aramark was squeezing the bottom line to increase profits, possibly in advance of a sale. So a couple of things to touch on there. Apparently, like I was saying, the Pratt's really looked after their staff and it looks like Aramark don't really do that. And so where the Pratt's would have enjoyed or where the Pratt's would have only generated a net profit of 2.2 million or 4% of turnover, they put that money back into the business. They put that money back into high class or high quality produce. They put that money back into facilities, resources, and they put that money back into their staff. So again, an industry observer says that Aramark just wants to squeeze the bottom line to increase profits, possibly in, in advance of a sale. There are rumors going around that Margaret Heffernan, the owner of Dunn's, who tried to buy Aramark in the first place, is making a play for, or sorry, Margaret Heffernan, the owner of Dunn's, who tried to buy Avoca in the first place, is making a play to get it now. She'll get it for a song by comparison. But here's a really interesting thing. Quite quickly after Aramark bought Avoca for $64 million from the Pratt family, they sold the property portfolio to the tune of $45 million. Now, obviously, there would be prerequisites to those sales, like long-term long term leases for the Avoca businesses. But that's a fucking seriously clever move. They bought it for 64. Portfolio, property portfolio sold quite quickly for 45. Effectively, they acquired Avoca, the business, less the property portfolio, for fucking 19 million euro. Jesus H. Christ. Yeah, like I'm saying... Margaret Heffernan is now trying to get her hands on it, or that's what the rumor is. And um, she has already started, like when she didn't get it in 2015, she went and took a head chef from the Central Processing Unit in the Southern Cross and brought him to Dunn's, and he started Baxter and Green. If you go out to Corners Court now, it looks identical to Avoca. They've got Baxter and Green, it's got the salads, the proteins, the ricotta strudels, there's the spinach and ricotta strudels, the sausage rolls it's a carbon copy of the avoca grab and go counters but it's about 60 percent less expensive to buy for you as a consumer in fairness corners court looks amazing you go into the food part of it it's unbelievable and she also acquired whelan's and whelan's was the butchers for avoca and stuff so she's making a play for them she's bought a building apparently adjacent to salt in monkstown and that's what you do you identify your top competitors you move in next door you do what they do for cheaper and you put them out of fucking business so she's a clever lady as well apparently she is not to be trifled with but it, one thing that it says then sorry just to go on in the absence of financial data for avoca it's not clear how the business has performed under aramark or how badly it has been hit by covid see you're not going to find that out you're not allowed to know that we don't want to know that i bet you it's doing all right that's my theory 
I just there's one thing that I can't get my head around here. It says here the president and chief executive of Aramark Northern Europe, Frank Gleason, who was also the president of Irish employers group IBEC. Now, for me, I just thought, I saw that and I thought, wow, what the fuck is going on? That seems shady to me. Something seems a bit off there. That the chief executive officer of Aramark Northern Europe is also the president of Irish employers group IBEC. So, blah, 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 blah. Avoca is still a leading player in food retail here, but the sector has become fiercely competitive with budget brands battling for market share at one end and an increasing array of upmarket retailers and artisan food brands popping up at the other. Aramark's cost-cutting agenda and Avoca's high-end credentials is a circle that still needs to be squared. Just to wrap up then. The food sector and the food service industry has always, in my opinion, or certainly in the last 10 years, been fiercely competitive. And there has been businesses popping up on both sides of the scale for ages now. In fact, we were in a bubble before the pandemic. We're probably headed for an even bigger bubble now. And obviously, when the dust settles on coronavirus, we'll get a real indication of how bad it was for the food service industry. We're going to see a lot of people go to the wall, obviously. A lot of localised businesses and restaurants go to the wall. Aramark has a cost-cutting agenda. I would like. I would agree with that. That is an opinion of mine as well. Um, I've seen it as both an employee and as both a consumer of Avoca. And so, for me, there's no real argument to that. But I suppose, again, I just wanted to wrap it up under the banner of staff loyalty. One of the ways in which Aramark has cut costs is that they've fucking messed around with the livelihoods of a lot of people i know this not only from conjecture and hearsay but i know it on a personal level i've seen it it happened to me i saw it i was treated really badly by that company all my colleagues were treated really badly by that company that is a fact for anyone who's reading this article and reading the refutes of aramark and thinking oh i can't make my mind up let me reiterate let me hammer home to you the fact that these people treat their employees like shit okay and they still want to charge top dollar for that said product so i just want you to remember that the next time you go to a Volca and want to part with your hard-earned money remember they have absolutely no staff loyalty no loyalty to, to loyalty to their staff and ask yourself are you all right with that does that sit all right with you on a sort of um moral level and if not don't give them your money. There are so many more localized, um, independent businesses that are struggling to survive, that are setting themselves up right now, who want to look after their staff, want to produce the best product they can. I suggest you take your hard-earned money and you spend it with them. There's loads of them. Just look outside, go down your local high street. There's loads of them there. Give them your money. Fuck Aramark. Don't give them your money. They don't give a shit about normal working class people like us. So don't give a shit about them and don't finance their operation. That would just be my opinion. Um, listen, that's it. Thanks very much. We're going to talk next time about the property situation. I read a couple of articles that I actually found made my stomach churn. It seems that the biggest private landlords in this country are laughing at us at their annual general meetings. They're laughing to their shareholders about how much of a... Um, an attractive market our housing market is because we have supply and demand issues that for me is sickening the government to preside over their scumbags we'll get into it next week until then look after yourself love yourself i'm gonna try love myself wagwan take another photograph and document a life that's right And ways consist of simple things The days of black and white And faces from 